Throughout the various conflicts between the Global Defense Initiative and the Brotherhood of Nod, the Brotherhood were well known for ground units, such as the Stealth Tank and Black Hand Infantry. For aircraft, they had the Banshee and Venom. The one branch of the Brotherhood's military that doesn't get much attention, though, is their Navy. While Nod's Navy was not as large in comparison to GDI's, it was still used for a variety of tasks, such as transportation and offshore support for their land forces. During the First Tiberium War, both Nod and GDI had Landcraft Air Cushion, or LCAC, hovercraft. Usually part of an amphibious assault, the LCAC was used to transport infantry, vehicles, and other equipment onto beaches. Both factions used the Jeff A prototype hovercraft, which featured four rotating ducted propellers that allowed it to travel quickly across the water. Once the craft landed on the beach, it would unload its cargo and then return back to its offshore warship. For GDI, this warship was usually an LHD amphibious assault ship. LHD being an acronym for Landing Helicopter Deck. We don't know if the Brotherhood had any LHD ships in their navy during the First Tiberium War, but we do know that they made use of cargo freighters. These freighters looked harmless on the outside, but on the inside, they were well armed and capable of carrying a small military force, as well as acting as an offshore base. Commando Nick Havoc Parker was able to infiltrate one of these freighters by way of a small prototype Nod submarine. Though unarmed, this submarine seemed to be primarily used as a transport. Its small size allowed it to dock inside a bay area located in the middle of the freighter. The submarine had three propellers on the back of it. The one driver sat in a glass canopy at the front of the vessel, which was situated between two headlights. A hatch for personnel to use was located on top of the main body, with a larger hatch at the back, used to load and unload cargo from. Havoc's mission was to locate and rescue captured GDI soldiers being held on the freighter. As Havoc fought his way through the ship, he saw firsthand its armament and cargo. The ship carried plenty of armor, weapons, and ammunition for infantry. Havoc found four SAM missile racks, which he deliberately damaged so they couldn't be used. Afterward, he made his way to the ship's engine room. There, he sabotaged the engines by destroying four critical console systems that were monitored by Nod technicians. Taking an elevator to the upper level of the ship, Havoc found three GDI prisoners, but he needed a security card to unlock the cell. One of the prisoners told Havoc that it could be found in a medical lab. While on his way to this lab, Havoc found initiates in stasis inside special containers. These initiates were the first Tibera mutants that were part of the Brotherhood's Regenesis project. At this point, Nod was fully aware of Havoc's presence on the ship, and the vessel's Eva continuously berated Havoc, demanding his surrender. Captain Parker, resistance is useless. All units have been alerted to your position. Making his way to the upper deck, Havoc found the lab, acquired the security key, and freed the prisoners. Now Havoc had to figure out a way to destroy the freighter. As he made his way through some crew quarters, he looked for a level 2 security card in order to access other parts of the ship. Havoc acquired the card from a Nod sailor named First Mate Gilligan. Not much is known about Gilligan, other than he had been working his career towards naval operations. Gilligan had little interest in combat, preferring to avoid any ground conflict situations. From the bridge at the stern, one can see the barrels of two rocket batteries, one on the port side and the other on the starboard side of the ship. Both are hidden between a stack of containers. Next, Havoc had to obtain yet another security key. This one would give access to the submarine that he and the GDI prisoners needed to escape. Making his way toward the bow of the ship, Havoc found a helicopter pad guarded by Black Hand troops. At the bow of the ship were two forward torpedo tubes. Nod could use these to sink any ships. The ships would most likely be unaware of the attack until it was too late, not suspecting it to come from a freighter. After Havoc sabotaged these torpedo tubes, he began making his way to the upper deck. 
On his way, Havoc passed through a command and control room and more living quarters, including a recreation room, meeting room, and a mess hall next to the kitchen. On the upper deck, Havoc went up against Stooping, the captain of the ship, who was guarded by a squad of Kemp warriors. What little we know of Captain Stooping was that he was a loyal Brotherhood supporter. This was due to the organization having rescued him while he was stranded on an island. Havoc successfully killed Stooping and his Kemp warriors and acquired the submarine security card. On his way back to the others, Havoc destroyed a Nod Apache helicopter this helicopter having previously taken off from the ship's helipad, before Havoc had found it. Havoc and the prisoners were able to make their escape using the Nod sub, just in time too, as the C4 charges Havoc had planted throughout the freighter detonated, setting the entire ship ablaze. Naval vessels didn't seem to play a role for either the Brotherhood or GDI during the Second Tiberium War. This isn't to say that they didn't make use of any, just that they were not seen during any of the major battles, with the exception being GDI's amphibious APC. Though even this vehicle saw limited use, as GDI was more reliant on space and aircraft to move men and material across bodies of water. Whereas the Brotherhood was making extensive use of subterranean tunnels and vehicles in order to do the same. In the interim years between the Second and Third Tiberium War, Kane recovered from the injuries he sustained during his fight with McNeil. With the help of his new AI Legion, Kane sought to reunite and rebuild the Brotherhood. Part of Kane's plan involved reclaiming some of the Brotherhood's stealth technology that was captured by GDI long ago. This technology had been left to rot in an abandoned research facility located somewhere along the Australian coast. In order to land Nod forces and establish a beachhead, the Brotherhood used their new amphibious assault craft, which greatly resembled a manta ray. There isn't any information available on when this craft was first developed. The mission, What is Rightfully Ours, takes place in the year 2034. I'd have to think that the craft was probably created at least a few years before that date, possibly during the Second Tiberium War itself, but this mission is the first time we see it in action. This hovercraft had a wide wingspan, with one propeller in the middle of each wing. These propellers provided vertical lift for the craft, enabling it to hover across the surface of the ocean. Two more engines, which resembled tails, were located near the middle of the craft's main body, and provided the vehicle forward thrust. The cockpit for the pilots was at the front of the craft's main body. Below it was a large cargo hold, which could carry infantry, vehicles, and equipment, including an entire MCV. Attached to each side of the cargo hold were large floaters that gave the craft buoyancy when on water. They could also be used on soft ground surfaces such as sand. This mission is the only time we see this hovercraft in action, though I think it's safe to assume that it was probably utilized elsewhere to transport Nod forces across the ocean before, and perhaps even during the Third Tiberium War. Once Kane successfully reunited and rebuilt the Brotherhood, he began the Third Tiberium War against GDI by destroying the GDSS Philadelphia and launching attacks on Blue Zones. During the war, the Brotherhood had built a few new battleships which they used to transport supplies and counter GDI's own navy. These Nod battleships, as they were called, were well armed and armored. The battleship featured a catamaran multi-hull design. At the bow of the ship were five VLS vertical launching system tubes, which could be used to launch missiles at any hostile targets on land, sea, or in the air, all depending on the type of missile that was loaded inside the VLS. Further back from the VLS tubes, at the fore of the ship, were three turrets. Each one was armed with three gun barrels. Three more of these turrets were located at the aft, which gave the ship a total of 18 guns. These naval guns could be used directly against other hostile warships, or to provide offshore fire support for Nod land forces. In addition, the vessel had 10 secondary turrets attached to sponsons on the port and starboard sides amidship. 
Each of these turrets was armed with two gun barrels for a total of 20 guns. Close to the midship was the bridge from which the Nod captain commanded their vessel. And just aft of the bridge was what may be its radar. The Brotherhood didn't seem to have many of these battleships in their arsenal, and there are only two well-known instances of their use during the Third War. As part of GDI's counteroffensive against the Brotherhood, General Jack Granger ordered an unnamed commander to assault the Port of Alexandria in Egypt. The assault was aimed at preventing the Brotherhood from exporting components that could be used to create a liquid Tiberium bomb. GDI also wanted to prevent Nod from shipping other supplies and equipment to support their forces elsewhere in the world. As part of the assault, the commander was required to destroy two massive loading cranes at the docks, and to level the nearby base and port authority buildings. There were two battleships docked here during the battle, and sinking them would successfully block the port. The GDI commander was given mammoth tanks for the assault on the Brotherhood's port and base. The commander's forces easily destroyed the loading cranes and sank both of Nod's battleships. Doing so allowed two GDI hovercraft to bring in a couple of mammoth tanks as reinforcements. The commander then ordered his forces to level the Nod base, shutting the port down for good. Sometime after the GDI assault on Nod's bases in Egypt, Kane ordered Legion to capture GDI's leading liquid Tiberium research scientist, Dr. Giraud. The capture was meant to prevent the doctor from endangering Kane's plan to build a liquid Tiberium device, and in doing so, persuade him to work for the Brotherhood. The doctor was located at a facility in Blue Zone 8, which was a Chilean spaceport formerly used to staff and maintain the Philadelphia. A Nod battleship anchored itself just off the coast, and deployed an MCV onto the beach. Four carryalls arrived with flame tanks to protect the MCV, as it built up its base and ground forces. Other than providing Legion with an MCV, the Nod battleship didn't contribute any further to the mission. Even when Legion had successfully captured Dr. Giraud, he was extracted from the area via a carryall. Once the Doctor was safe, I assume the rest of the Nod forces were evacuated onto the battleship, as GDI's own navy had arrived with reinforcements. The fate of Nod's navy after the Third Tiberium War is unknown. Given how the majority of the Brotherhood occupied the last Scrint Threshold Tower in southern Italy, it doesn't seem like many of their ships survived. Though perhaps a few ships are hidden along the coast of some Yellow Zone elsewhere in the world, with their crews awaiting the call of their Prophet Cain when the time of their ascension is at hand.